Imagine this, you've been making beats for quite some time now. Every time you create a beat, it feels like you're learning more and more. Your dopamine levels are rising and you feel so happy. But what goes up must come down and now you feel stuck. You feel like making beats is going slower and slower and you're not improving anymore. But don't you worry guys, today I'm going to show you 7 FL Studio tricks that will improve your beat making skills by a lot. The first one, the 808 is responsible for a lot of power in your beat, but you can mess it up really easy without even realizing it. A lot of beat makers will put the 808 in mono, which is great because that gives you more space for other elements. But there's actually something else you can do that is so much better. Duplicate the 808 and copy the notes of the first one onto the second one. Then send the second 808 to another mixer track so that you have the two 808s next to each other. With the first mixer track selected, find the frequency splitter, open it up and in the middle disable the mids and the high frequencies. That way we can isolate the lows. Now go to the second mixer track and add another frequency splitter. This time you need to disable the low end so that you can only hear the mids and the highs. If we now play them together the output will be exactly the same. The only difference is we separated the lows from the mids and the highs. This means we can make the adjustments to one of them without touching the other. Now put the mixer track with the lows in mono and now the low end will be more centered. But why should we go through all that trouble? Let me explain it to you in trick number two. And that is making unique 808s. Now that we have the mids and the highs separated, we can basically do whatever we want with it. And that is because it won't impact the lows. For example, let's open up the 808 sampler and right click on the panning knob. Choose create automation clip. In the playlist you can now make the high end of the 808 move from the left to the right. But that is not all you can do. You can basically add any effect to this 808 and that way you can create a unique sound that no one has ever used before. We all love reverb, but there's one big problem with it. Reverb will blur your mix, it will make it sound muddy and the end result will be terrible without you even realizing it. But of course there's one simple trick that can fix this. Let's say we have a reverb on this melody. Right click the wet slider and choose create automation clip. On the clip itself, click the little icon on the top left to open up the menu and choose articulator tools. Then select analyze audio file. Choose the clip that you use in the playlist and click OK. Now FL Studio created an envelope for the automation clip that matches with the peaks of the audio clip. Now if you go back to the articulator tools, choose scale levels. That way you can adjust the waveform to your liking. You can now for example invert it. Offsetting it will definitely make the reverb sound special so play around with it. The next step is going back to the tools and choose smooth up. That way you can play with the attack and the release to adjust the amount. You can see this as a mix knob between a normal reverb and the automation clip. The next button that will help you level up as a producer is the subscribe button. Yes. And of course it would also help me grow the channel. If you don't know the next trick already, it is gonna blow you away. I didn't know this until yesterday and it's actually very simple. You ever find yourself deleting tracks in the channel rack one by one? Of course you tried selecting them, then click delete, but that doesn't work. Now luckily there's a way to delete them all at once. Select them just like we did before. Then hit alt plus delete on your keyboard. Pow! I just found this out, I can't believe it. You find yourself working on a beat and every single time you recreate the same effect chain over and over again. This complete destroys your workflow but there is something you can do about it. Right click the mixer track and choose file then save mixer state as. Now you can give it a name the next time you're working on a project right click the mixer and choose file. Then in this list you can find all your saved mixer presets. Such a time saver. For some reason people are scared of this graph right here. I promise you using this will save you so much time. To open it up hit ctrl plus k on your keyboard. Here you can adjust the velocity just like you can in the piano roll. Fun fact if you click on the note pitch you can actually access the piano roll without even opening it, which is super efficient. Here you have your favorite sample in the channel rack, but because your library is 15 terabytes big, you will never find it again. Good thing you can just drag and drop it in the browser. That way FL will reveal the location of the sample. Of course, with the new FL Studio 21 update, you can just type in the name of the sample at the bottom. Last but not least, there can go so much wrong when exporting your track, so it's super important to understand the window from top to bottom. So to continue the lesson, go check out that video right there. Um, I'll see you there. Goodbye, my friends.